Actually, she's there. She's there. <laughs> she's there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I have um, to introduce Gillian, yeah. and and I read this uh, this CV. Gillian Weaver, co-founder of Human Meek Foundation, United Kingdom. Gillian Weaver. A special... Que souhaitez-vous savoir concernant Gillian Weaver oh, C'est pas possible. Entendu. Oh, Excusez-moi. Gillian Weaver a specialized in the field of human meat banking for over 30 years and was the manager of the world's longest continually operating human milk bank at Queen Charlotte's and Chelsea Hospital in West London, UK for 27 years. Throughout this time, she has been committed to driving improvement in safety and sustainability, as well as promoting and facilitating equity of access to donor milk for all infants who will benefit. As a co-founder uh, 1997 and share forum lead uh, 23 2015 of the UK Association for Milk Banking and co-founder in 2010 and president from 22 to 2015 of the European Milk Bank Association, EMBA, Gillian led the organization of international conferences. She also contributed to the development of internationally recognized guidelines, including the NICE, NICE Clinical Guidelines, Gidlin 90, uh, 793, uh, in uh, 2019, she was the lead author for a paper presenting recommendation from the EMBA for the establishment and operation of human milk banks in Europe. As an international milk banking specialist, and consultant, Gillian works with NGOs to develop tools and resources for the global milk banking community. She has provided support and recommendation to aid the establishment of human milk banks around the, the world, including in Australia, India, Kenya, Myanmar, New Zealand, South Africa and Vietnam. She is a co uh, New Radicals for 2018, described as changing the UK for the better by developing creative way of tackling society's biggest challenges. She also co-found the Human Milk Foundation, a UK-based charity establishment to fund donor milk provision, as well as training and research into the science of human milk. Gillian lectures widely and write on human milk banking. She is a registered expert for the Europe funding program and was a member of ICCBBA technical advisor group that agreed the ISBT28 coding system for human milk. In 1919, uh, Gillian received a point of light award from the UK Prime Minister Theresa May for her contribution to the support of breastfeeding and human milk banking. To Gillian, you have the, sp the, the speak. 
Uh, is uh, Gillian is in the in the meeting? Yes. Hello. Hello, Gillian. Hello, Claude, and uh, good morning, everybody. It's uh, it's it's lovely to be here, um, and I personally would like to welcome everybody to day two of this uh, of this webinar, nursing and pediatrics, um, and thank everyone who's joined us online. Um, there's a very, very good day ahead. I know there's some excellent speakers uh, and, uh, and I'm grateful uh, that, uh, that this event uh, is taking place. Uh, nowadays, we're so much more familiar with online conferences than we have been in the past. Uh, and uh, they're an excellent way to bring together um, people across the world with, um, with, with limited trouble. You know, we don't have to travel far these days, which is a shame because it means I don't get to see you in person, but uh, it's great for the environment uh, and it's great for, um, uh, for everybody's um, personal circumstances. So thank you to the organizers for asking me to co-chair uh, this, uh, this session this morning. As Claude has described, I'm Gillian Weaver uh, and I'm a specialist in the field of human milk banking, which is a very small field in the whole global um, field of, of neonatology and pediatrics and infant feeding and uh, maternal and child health. Um, but actually it's a very important field because um, in my opinion, it's instrumental in the support of breastfeeding. And we're going to be hearing a lot more about that um, this morning. I've worked in this field for over 30 years now. Um, I don't feel as if I've ever done anything else but, uh, but working human milk banking. Uh, and Claude has described um, some of the, the work that I do, but I think what sums it all up uh, and uh, uh, that I would like to, to share is that the focus of my work has been to drive improvements in the safety and sustainability of human milk banking. Uh, and to promote and facilitate the equity of access to donor human milk for all infants who will benefit. Um, if you look across the world, and I'm sure that Dr. Natalie Schenker will be um, talking about this later, um, but if, if not, we can pick it up in, uh, in the discussions. If you look around the world, there are very different pictures of, of human milk banking. Some countries invest a great deal from the point of view of their, uh, their government, their Ministry of Health. They invest in this, in this field. Um, others, uh, there, are, uh, there are currently no milk banks, although uh, the growth in milk banking globally uh, has been enormous in the last um, decade. So what's most dear to my heart at the moment is having been the co-founder of a very special human milk bank uh, in England. Uh, the Hearts Milk Bank, and uh, Dr. Schenker will talk much more uh, about this later today. But the reason it's so close to my heart is because I feel uh, we've developed a great uh, example of how to support families uh, and how to support babies, and in particular, how to support them during this very, very important um, early uh, early days of their of their lives. So uh, I think it's very fitting uh, that this topic of the first thousand days has been chosen uh, as the main theme uh, for, for, these, uh, for these days. Uh, and I think that the work of the uh, Association for Pediatric Education in Europe, so AEEP, is to be congratulated on um, focusing uh, on this. Uh, as you know, I just want to give you a reminder that uh, the AEEP um, is a European uh, association. It's independent. Um, it's independent of outside influences. It's non-political. I think that's very important. Most important, it's non-profit making. It's a non-profit organization. Um, and that is, uh, in this day and age, I think it's really important to, to highlight because there are so many um, influences on individuals, on associations, on governments, uh, on ministries of health, um, and to have an association that is non-profit making, non-political, but uh, is a scientific association uh, is very important. 
Uh, and the aims of AEP are to encourage improvements in pediatric education. Well, what better way to do that than to hold meetings uh, like this that are so easy to, to access. And I think Confrontiers have made it very easy um, to access. Uh, and the other aim is to collect, exchange and distribute information um, about pediatric education and to promote research in pediatric education. So, so this conference is a collaboration between AEP and Confrontiers conferences. Uh, and so here we are on day two. Uh, I want to just have a little look back at yesterday, I think, to bring everybody um, up to speed for those who, who missed what happened yesterday. Um, but basically the first thousand days of life um, have been very, very high uh, on the agenda. And the reason for this is because the first thousand days of being a parent are now accepted. They're globally, scientifically accepted, widely accepted to be the most significant in a child's development. What happens in those first thousand days will stay with that child for the rest of his or her life. Uh, and I don't think there's any, uh, there's any argument about that. So it puts enormous responsibility on those who um, are bringing children into the world, who are caring for children, uh, and any outside uh, agencies as well. Uh, so, um, as I say, leading child health experts across the world, everywhere, agree that the care given during these first thousand days has more influence on the child's future than at any other time in their life. And it's I think if you didn't understand this field, that would be counterintuitive because for much of that time, um, you know, there is very little that you can uh, that you can see in terms of the impact uh, on babies uh, and uh, and and young children. Um, but in addition to being so influential, the first thousand days also present some of the most challenging moments in a young person's life. So. Uh, at a time when they're not able to do anything about it. So they are completely um, dependent upon those around them, those who care for them, either um, caring for them at home or caring for them uh, medically and health-wise. So yesterday we heard from Dr. Virginie Rigueur from the Necker Sick Children's Hospital um, in Paris. She's the, uh, been the doctor responsible for the Lactarium in Ile de France since 2002. So Virginie, uh, in addition to being um, a, 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 um, a pediatrician with enormous expertise, um, has a very long and wide experience of, of human milk banking. And Virginie talked about the importance of both the environment and epigenetics for the first thousand days. So crucial to um, a child's development. Uh, we also heard from Dr. Michael Fayon um, about the first thousand days and pneumology. Um, so pneumology, in other words, the functioning of the respiratory system, um, uh, the lungs, the bronchial tubes, the pleura, the trachea, and so on, uh, and the diseases associated um, with this. So um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, respiratory, other respiratory um, diseases. And uh, in addition, focusing specifically on the first thousand days, um, neurodevelopment was uh, explored by uh, Dr. Rebola, Dr. Muriel Rebola, um, who, like Michael, is from the University of Bordeaux in France. The university has had a very um, uh, intense um, contribution, made a very um, big contribution uh, to, to this meeting. Um, and um, and uh, I know that, uh, uh, that uh, Claude, uh, Professor Beer, will be uh, very proud of his, uh, of his colleagues at the university for everything that they've contributed uh, to this. Um, and then in addition to, uh, to the uh, pneumology and the neuro uh, development, uh, the uh, first thousand days and the impact on infants uh, of infections in children was presented by Dr. Uh, Jean Salong, um, again from the University of, of Bordeaux. And these subjects followed a fascinating introduction um, from Dr. Juan Brin, who set the scene uh, for all of these days by talking about uh, the evolution of breastfeeding. 
So this is a topic that I've long been fascinated in uh, for many, many years, um, since I first heard Dr. Peter or Professor Peter Hartman uh, talk about evolution and breastfeeding many, many years ago. Um, it's fascinating. And I think that everyone involved in caring for infants during the first thousand days should be familiar um, with, this, with this topic. I wish that they would all have access to it. And in fact, um, one of the things that we can do in the future is to um, direct people to uh, AEEP and to be able to um, catch up on, uh, on um, Professor Breen's uh, talk. Because it's impossible to ignore the influences of evolution on who we all are today. I think everything um, needs to be seen in the context of evolution. Of course, there are lots of other factors, but evolution is, is at the heart of who we all are today. So um, in addition yesterday to uh, catch up and to remind everybody, the nutrition of both the pregnant mother and the lactating mother um, were addressed uh, by, um, uh, by Professor Claude, uh, who's co-chairing this morning. Um, and then fetal and postnatal growth in preterm infants. So uh, in that specialist um, topic of preterm infants was, uh, was addressed by uh, Dr. Geraldine Gascoigne of the Angers University Hospital Centre um, in France. So I'm um, delighted to co-chair this morning's session with, uh, with Claude. I've known him for many years now. Um, I'm always in awe of his expertise and his experience in the fields, not only of pediatrics, neonatology and intensive care. He has a much wider, broader um, field of expertise. Um, he's a clinical assistant director of the Bordeaux University. Um, and whilst you were introduced to him yesterday, I think it's worth repeating that he's an active member of different scientific organizations throughout Europe and also North and South America that specialize in perinatal medicine. Um, he's, very well, he's, he's very well thought of um, globally. He's served as president of, a, uh, of the um, Association of Pediatric Education in Europe, AEP, since 2008. Uh, and he's been very involved also in the French Human Milk Banking Association, which is how I know him. He's been involved for more than 10 years. Um, he's currently carrying out researches on the composition of human milk, which given that human milk has been fundamental to the, um, to the survival of the human species. Um, it's, I think, unbelievable how little we know about it uh, and how we still don't know so much about just the basic components in human milk. How can this be? And I think one of the reasons why is because in the period when there's been, you know, this scientific explosion um, in, within medicine and uh, nutrition uh, and, uh, uh, and all the fields in which we, which we represent. Whilst that's been taking place, alongside it has been an explosion in the development of alternatives to human milk, uh, uh, substitutes for human milk. Uh, we know far more about the composition of artificial substitutes for human milk than we know about human milk itself. And I just let that hang there because as I said, this is something that is fundamentally part of um, and such an, a hugely important aspect of these first thousand days uh, and the, the growth and the development of, of, of a baby, um, of a young child. Um, but laying the foundations for the rest of their life. So it's, it's very important that, uh, that we focus on human milk um, at this meeting. So just a final word about Professor Claude um, that I'd like to say, because you won't read this from, uh, from his CV, you won't read it in his biography, um, 